Hey Grant. Oh, hey Martin. Hey, I've been using the gcloud command line tool from the cloud SDK a lot recently, and I'd like uh, to get a bit more productive with it. Uh, do you have any tips or tricks? I sure do. I have six tricks up my sleeve to help you with your productivity when using gcloud. Cool, tell me more. As you know, I'm trying to learn the gcloud command line tool a bit more. And there are new flags that I'm unfamiliar with, like all the new features of Cloud Run. Is there a way I can quickly learn these new features and flags? Yes, there is. So here's a fun one. gcloud has an interactive mode where you can see documentation as you type. To start interactive mode, run gcloud beta interactive. This will start a session in your terminal, providing auto-completion and inline documentation as you type. So for example, Cloud Run has a lot of feature flags you can specify. If you type gcloud run deploy dash dash, you can go and toggle through all the flags. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's max instances. That's the one I was looking for. Cool. All right, great. Uh, thank you for that tip. Uh, for number two, um, here's a different issue. When I deploy to Cloud Functions or to Cloud Run, I keep getting the same prompts in gcloud when running those commands. So like it asks me for my location for my Cloud Run service, or it asks me to specify if I want to deploy to Cloud Run Managed or to Kubernetes. So I have to write these large scripts with many command line flags for this. How do I avoid that? Oh, uh, do you know about gcloud configs? No, I don't. Oh, uh, let me show you. So uh, gcloud configs allow you to save configuration options so you don't need to get prompted for them, and you don't need to repeat them. So the general syntax is gcloud config set, and then your property and value. So for example, when deploying to Cloud Run, you could run the command of gcloud run deploy my app. And then uh, you provide your, your image. But then you might notice, oh, you get prompted. OK, do you want Cloud Run fully managed? And which region do you want? Right. Right. So, so let's go and cancel that. Um, or you could go and set your config. So you can set your config with gcloud config set your run platform to manage, and then maybe your run region to Europe West 3. So if I do that, then it'll update the properties, and I can simply rerun the previous command, and you'll notice now I'm not prompted automatically just working. Oh, nice. I like fewer prompts. OK, cool. Uh, for number three, sometimes I need to include the project ID with a command. I also switch between projects often. And sometimes I use the wrong project. And I have actually, in the past, sometimes deployed code to the wrong project. Uh, my manager did not like that. Is there an easier way to manage the projects? Um, yeah, uh, there is. So I face this too. It's a little annoying um, specifying your project name everywhere. But um, with, and, and I don't really like mix up deploying between different projects. That's that's sort of scary. Um, but <laughs> um, but with G Cloud, you can get and set your current project. So in your scripts, you don't need to hard code your project ID. So in the command line. You can set the project with gcloud config set project and then your project name. Um, once you have done that, then that'll be your default project with all the gcloud commands. And you can also uh, get your current project and start in an environment variable. How do you do that? Well, you can go and type. Uh, can go and type, um, let's say, you want your project. 
here's a little script um, to set your project inside this environment variable. Then you can use this environment variable anywhere, like when using gcloud. So here's a little example. Uh, when using gcloud build submit, you can provide your tag, and you always need your project. And so it'll just recognize that and work. So I, I use this all the time in my scripts when deploying to Cloud Run. Oh, nice. No more deploying code to the wrong project for me. <laughs> so for number four, I switch around between a few different projects, and I sometimes forget which projects have billing enabled. Many cloud services require billing to be enabled before using them. So how can I check that grant? Oh, uh, that's a good question, Martin. So with gcloud, there's a relatively new command you can use to go and check this. You can run uh, the following gcloud billing, uh, beta billing command. So after you run this, uh, you, you get your project, you describe it, and um, you'll get a Boolean value of true or false. And so uh, this will indicate if billing is enabled for that project. Oh, cool. Now I can check if billing is enabled for all my projects without having to go to the web browser and the cloud console over there. Yep. All right. So for number five, uh, when I've deployed a private Cloud Run service, I can't really test it using curl. If I try to curl it, I get the response error forbidden. How do I fix that? Yep, so a Cloud Run service that wasn't deployed with dash dash allow unauthenticated is not accessible with unauthorized requests. So for example, we can go and try curling a Cloud Run service and we'll see an error. For example, like 403 forbidden, right? Yeah. Uh, not anybody on the, the public web can test our proprietary Cloud Run service. That's what um, I'm getting, yep. Yep, um, but that but that's like really uh, very difficult to test. It's great that we have security, but but we want to be able to test locally. So um, by adding our HTTP auth bear token when curling, um, we can go and fix this issue. And so here we'll just provide a header with our authorization token from gcloud. And you can see, cool. hey, oh, Martin. <laughs> it works. Nice. I'll use that for sure. So, uh, but Grant, so this worked, but whose access level was used now for this command? Uh, that's a really great question. So this command uses the same authorization as the person who logged in to that machine with gcloud auth login. Ah, nice. All right, for number six, uh, sometimes when using Google Cloud, I'm supposed to use a project number rather than a project ID. This is, mm. for example, when I'm using service accounts or creating service accounts. Uh, is there a way to get that project number if I have the project ID? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, well, with a little bit of G Cloud Boo, <laughs> you can go and get <laughs> one value uh, from the other. So, so with this little command, um, I use this all the time. Um, you can go and get your project number if you have your project ID. So what it does in the background, it sort of lists your projects and gets your project ID and then formats it just for that number. So, so you might use this with uh, different credentials or, or especially like with cloud storage. Um, and, and likewise, let's say you have that project number but you want to get your ID, um, and so you can you can do the the reverse, and you can go and list your projects and get that project ID, and there you get your your project ID. All right, thanks for showing me these six incredibly useful tips, Grant. Uh, I didn't know you can do all of that stuff from the command line. Oh, uh, you're quite welcome, Martin. I mean, I keep discovering new features and new tips myself. I guess you learn something new every day. Oh, yes. I've learned six new things today. <laughs>
Thank you everyone for watching. We hope you found these tips useful and please enter any questions or comments below. See you next time.